Today I'm going to make synthetic wintergreen flavoring, which is a flavor you might be familiar with if you've ever had a mint lifesaver or wintergreen gum. To get started, I had 35 grams of salicylic acid that I synthesized from aspirin pills along with 30 milliliters of methanol to a flask. This represents a massive excess of methanol which makes salicylic acid my limiting reagent. This is vigorously stirred for a while to ensure that the salicylic acid is thoroughly dissolved into the methanol and then I add 7.5 milliliters of 92% sulfuric acid to act as a catalyst. The addition of the sulfuric acid turns the solution violet, and I'm really not sure why. Regardless, my goal here is to add a methyl group to the salicylic acid and form methyl salicylate, which is wintergreen. I've included some excerpts from the Wikipedia page on wintergreen, and you can pause it if you're interested on reading about it. Anyway, to actually synthesize wintergreen, you need to reflux this mixture for as long as you can possibly tolerate. I did it for two and a half hours, but if I had gone longer, my yield would have been even better. What's happening here is a Fischer esterification reaction, which I've covered several times on this channel, so I won't beat it to death, but the idea is that the sulfuric acid catalyzes the addition of a methyl group to the salicylic acid, forming methyl salicylate. I lost the footage of me doing this, but after refluxing for two and a half hours, I transfer the product to a beaker and then boil off the excess methanol until a distinct layer forms. This is transferred to a separatory funnel for washing, and the lower layer that forms is the methyl salicylate due to its very high density relative to water. I washed this first with 100 milliliters of distilled water, and I think that I shook it too hard because I seem to have incorporated some unreacted salicylic acid into my methyl salicylate, which is kind of annoying. Regardless, I drain off my lower methyl salicylate layer and then add it back to the separatory funnel before washing a second time with concentrated sodium bicarbonate solution to neutralize the excess sulfuric acid. This produces a lot of carbon dioxide gas, so it's important to constantly vent while you agitate the separatory funnel. After no more bubbling can be observed, I drain off my lower methyl salicylate layer and it's time for a distillation. The distillation is pretty basic and all I do is collect everything that distills over above 118 degrees Celsius. This will give me nearly pure methyl salicylate while everything that distilled over below 118 degrees Celsius is waste and can be discarded. One fun fact about methyl salicylate is that when it's mixed with sugar and dried, it can be broken to exhibit triboluminescence. Since all wintergreen produced for use in food products is made how I showed today, this is actually why if you bite a mint lifesaver hard enough you can produce a spark, which I figured you guys might find interesting. In any case, my distillate here still contains a visible amount of water, so I distill it again to get a final yield of 18.72 grams, or 47%. This yield is fine for me, but if you want a better one, I'd consider refluxing a lot longer. And as always, I hope you found this interesting, and consider giving me a follow.